Welcome to Freedom's Foundation. I am the Constitution Guy and tonight we're going to talk about how the founders used self-interest to their advantage in creating our government. Remember, if we're going to be successful in creating a government, we have to be aware of human nature. So we can't base it on what we think our politicians should do. We have to base it on what we know they will do. And we know that they're always going to do what's best for themselves. That's just human nature. It's human nature for people to do what's best for themselves first and then think about the needs of others. And if you think about it, that poses a really big problem in a representative republic like ours where we elect people to go to Washington DC and represent us and the government. So if we know that these people here our politicians, if we know that they're always going to do what's best for themselves, how do we ever find somebody who's going to go to Washington DC and actually represent our interests? That's a really tough question, isn't it? And there's only one answer. The only way that we will ever get these people to truly represent these people is to make sure that these people are these people. <laughs> we have to make sure that our representatives are as much like regular citizens as they possibly can be. By making them like us, that means that their interests will be our interests and their concerns will be our concerns. So when they go out and do what's best for themselves, which we know they're going to do, they'll naturally be doing what's best for us whether they mean to or not. But what happens today? Our congressmen get special health care, special pensions, all kinds of things like that. So these people aren't these people anymore. They're really kind of over here somewhere, aren't they? Any perks like that that separate the political class from the rest of us put our freedom in danger. Let's use the health care bill as an example. Our members of Congress are able to get the special congressional health insurance. So when they were debating the health care bill, what they were really talking about was what kind of insurance the rest of us should get because they knew they weren't going to be affected by it. And here's the problem with that. Since they knew they were going to have great health insurance no matter what, if a lobbyist or if a campaign contributor or somebody came along and said, you know, Mr. Congressman, if you vote for this bill, we might be able to kick in a few little extra campaign donations for you or whatever it is they do now to influence our congressman. Well, in this situation, where does his interest lie? Sure, the health care bill is going to be a disaster for you and me, but that's not really his problem, is it? On the other hand, he does stand to gain financially if he votes for it. So now what's best for him is to go against the interests of the people. Now I'm not saying that this is necessarily what happened with the health care bill, but I'm not not saying it either. But what I am saying is that this is the type of situation that gets created when we allow our politicians to be separated from the people. Now granted, not every politician would be willing to do something like this, and it certainly doesn't happen every time. But it is human nature for this to be a very tempting situation. So our representatives have to be as much like regular citizens as they possibly can be. And part of that is that they need to live under the laws that they pass. In other words, members of Congress need to know that the laws that they pass will apply to them the exact same way they apply to everybody else. That might be the single greatest protection we have against ridiculous and oppressive laws. And the reason is simple. Nobody in their right mind is going to vote to take away their own freedom. Hmm, how do I vote on the bill to take away my freedom of speech? I'm going to go with no on that one. If our politicians have to be affected by the laws that they pass, what does that tell us about how much power this federal government should have? 
Well, again, we want our politicians to be voting on things that they have a direct interest in. So that means that the federal government should only be dealing with issues that affect this entire pyramid. Uh, if you're familiar with the General Welfare Clause, this is what that part of the Constitution is referring to. The founders wanted the federal government to deal with issues that were in the general welfare of the country. So that would be as opposed to the specific welfare of individual states or the specific welfare of certain groups of people. Look at it this way. Let's say that the federal government's thinking about funding a mayonnaise museum or something like that in Topeka, Kansas. Well, do you think a representative in Maine really cares about whether or not that museum gets its funding? Eh, probably not. I mean, it doesn't affect him, right? Well, that opens us up to the possibility that a lobbyist or somebody like that could come along and make him care about whether or not the museum gets its funding. So in that situation, he wouldn't be voting on what's in the best interest of the people. On the other hand, let's say that a foreign country comes along and invades Topeka, Kansas, and they've declared war on Kansas. Do you think that representative in Maine is going to care about that? Yes, he's probably going to care. So what about a representative in Wisconsin or in Florida? Yes, they're all going to care because it affects the entire country if someone invades Kansas. So that's largely going to take this out of the equation because it's in everybody's best interest to make sure that the nation is secure. So yes, national defense would be a federal issue. And if you look at Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, that's where all the core powers of the federal government are laid out. If you look at that section of the Constitution, every one of those powers has that same general type of purpose. Not one of them is local in, is local in nature. Again, the role of the federal government is to deal with issues that affect the entire country as a whole. If you want an easy way to understand what the purpose of the federal government really is, it was mainly designed to deal with things that are outside of the country's borders. So foreign diplomacy, national defense, immigration, those types of things. It's only domestic concerns are those things that affect all of the states generally. The role that our federal government was supposed to play in this country is a lot like the role somebody might play if they owned one of those big skyscrapers in a major city. The owner's job would be to make sure the building was structurally sound, to make sure that it was safe, and to try to create a positive environment to do business in for the companies that rent out that space. But that owner would have no business telling those companies how to run their businesses internally, uh, who to hire and who to fire, or what they should spend their money on. The same thing goes for this federal government. Its job is to make sure that the country as a whole is structurally sound and to try to create a positive, secure environment that these states can operate in. But it's got no business telling these states what to do within their own borders or what they should spend their money on. And it sure as heck shouldn't be telling individual citizens what they need to do in their own personal life. So that's how we can use self-interest to our advantage in creating a free government. Now if you've enjoyed these videos, please help me get the word out. Post them on Facebook, tweet out the links, email your friends, anything like that. I love helping people understand the Constitution and, and how it's supposed to work, so I'm greatly appreciative of anything like that that you can do. Next week, I'm going to be talking about the Commerce Clause and what it was really supposed to be used for, and I promise you, it is going to be every bit as awesome as this one was, so you don't want to miss it.